Hello, my name is Andreas. Um, I'm doing a book review on the sixth extinction on a natural history written by Elizabeth Colbert, a scientific journalist and was published on February 11, 2014. The book presents an idea that we're currently living in the middle of the sixth mass extinction. Colbert goes back through recent history describing different scenarios in which species are going extinct relatively quickly. In her book, she describes how humans are the leading cause of which species are going extinct due to numerous actions such as ocean acidification, global warming, and deforestation. Although Colbert discusses the several environmental changes we have observed in the relative recent years, most of her attention is focused on invasive species. More specifically, she introduces the reader to two concepts, one being Darwin's theory of geographical distribution, where the same species can be found um, on two different places and have very different traits. Through the species evolving or adapting to the surrounding environments. But factoring humans into the equation and you have species that have not had the chance to adapt to new predators, that being us humans, which have been proven to be inimical. Her second concept is the idea of new Pangea, the results from human interference and thus creating a new biological supercontinent. Meaning that the biological diversity we see across the seven continents can eventually become as indistinguishable than if we only had one continent. Colbert draws a connection to the extinction of the megafauna and how humans can be considered the first invasive species. By tracking human relocation, we can correlate their path with animals becoming extinct, as we saw in Europe with the mammoths when they settled in the Americas, and the giant sloth quickly become extinct due to human predation and habitat destruction. Mechanisms evolved over hundreds of years become useless when introduced to an unknown predator in such a short time. Colbert said that human cause extinctions have been a detrimental issue since the extinction of the megafauna and not just in the recent centuries. Colbert's book is not to change anyone's perspective or opinion on the matter, but simply to investigate and present the fact to the people and let them make their choice. She does not try to convey the reader to change your lifestyle or sacrifice your life in the name of preserving the earth, but she traveled the world to discover areas where these effects are palpable and documented her journey with people aiming at the most powerful corporations and people who still don't believe this is the reality. Um, so they do not have to be oblivious to the fact that all species, including us humans, are in grave danger and in need of urgent attention to our action. No other species in the entire history of Earth have changed its ecology as rapidly as ours. Humanity has this ability and power to remarkably change the world, but also cause, cause damaging and irreversible effects. Colbert compared compares the current extinctions with the previous ones we've had. And one major difference between the predecessors and the wave of, wave of extinctions we are experiencing today are human involvement, which is unprecedented in planetary history. Colbert claims are back and made more persuasive of personal stories. She goes to the Panamanian rainforest looking for the once abundant golden frog which have been diminished along with plenty of worldwide amphibian species because of citric acid, citric fungus, that is being spread with the help from humans. She witnessed bats with white nose syndrome, which is also a fungus that put bats in a, at an increasingly higher risk. She went diving to see the dying coral, re coral reefs because of ocean acidification. Every chapter, that Colbert wrote, she included a personal story with first-hand experience that makes the story more credible. Although the book was written to spread awareness about imminent threats on our planet, using own experiences separates her from the rest of the scientific community with similar mes messages by personalizing it, and not just looking at facts, but seeing the changes that are occurring. A common theme in Colbert's book is morality. She says the history of humanity is notorious since it's marked by both the beginning and what will inevitably be the end. There's fearlessness in going across the oceans, but the cowardice and cruelty required to kill animals represents the two sides of humanity. The earlier chapters she refers to, the earlier chapters she refers to humans as a species to prevent the reader from having a biased perspective against it. 
Other chapters in the book went into more detail on how previous extinctions were related to human activity, such as the great hawk were excessively hunted down and that resulted in extinction. These chapters support the idea that humans have been a major source in species depletion and extinction. Now more than ever, we see the devastating effects of human activity. Some of the content presented by Colbert have been topics I've seen before, with the exception of digging deeper into the history of human impact and their correlation to previous extinction. I had a brief perception on the topic before. However, the sixth extinction made me enforce some of my opinions on the topics by providing more in-depth details and evidence to support your claim. The evidence is there, and it's no secret that humans are the leading cause of species loss and reduced biodiversity all over the earth, which is which has been proven time after time, but hopefully, but hopefully it should be only a matter of time when actions are being set into motions. But at what cost will that be? I believe her intended audience are those who are oblivious to the apparent change in scientists document and observe. Colbert presents evidence and claims as someone who's not acquainted with the material could grasp. But I do believe for some people it's not about believing or not believing, but rather choosing to remain dormant with the idea that it would not affect them, and therefore choosing to stay unwilling to change. And for some, it can simultaneously gain profit and increase their wealth. I would recommend this book to anyone who is interested in conservation biology or any environmental issues as it provides a more personal, does a more unique and relatable story.